hello friends welcome back to digitalk uh, in this video i am going to cover about how you can convert a generic data source into the active grid link data source apart from that i will cover a uh, few important properties of your active grid link data sources what are the benefits of that if you are going to use that one so i have published a few more videos on data sources on generic data sources active grid link data sources and what is the difference between generic and active grid link data source if you have go haven't gone through that one just go to my channel and look for those videos but specific to this video i will cover two things one the three important parameters of your grid link data source that means the three important benefits of grid link data source Apart from that, if you wanted to convert a generic data source to active grid link data source, then what is the process for that one? And this is a, a, one of the critical activities that is uh, most of the time required in the professional environments where certain of the data sources are created uh, as a generic, but when they are in use, you have a requirement to convert them into active grid link data source. So what is the process for convert conversion? Right, so as I said, uh, first, I will explain about you three important uh, properties of your grid link data source. Okay, and then I'll be show you the process how you can convert that generic to active grid link data source. So the first property is fast connection failure. Okay, so this active grid data source is specifically designed to work with the Oracle Rack cluster. So Rack cluster in the sense where you have a multiple databases instances running in the backend, which is having a Rack cluster and have the lot of enhanced capabilities that is enabled by default in the database from the vendor right so if your web logic want to take the benefits of all of those technologies that are that has been enabled in your database for that there has been certain features that is get enabled with the help of active grid link data source so that your application that can take the benefit of all those features of the database okay so one of the service is notification services okay so for when we define the active grid link data source so your data source if you are defining an active grid link data source for that we define a notification uh, uh, service uh, port okay uh, that your web logic data source continuously ping okay or you can say that your uh, database automatically take the status of the instance running instances or the down instances and with the help of notification services it update to the data source so what had, what is the benefit of that one it provide a rapid failure detection so if you are aware about a certain configuration that is called a test connection on reserve which is there with the connection pool since very long so that means if you your application need a connection from the connection pool then you have a test connection on reserve properties there if you will enable that one then your web logic server will uh, test a particular connection if it is working or not before it handing over this to the application but that create a certain kind of a performance issues in your application if it is a run, if it is at runtime checking whether the connection is healthy or not by connecting to your database but with the help of notification service you are all of the connections that you have in your connection pool inside your data source will always be you can say it, it would be a healthy connection and if if any failure in the backend it will automatically published with the help of uh, notification service to your connection pool and your connection pool can remove that particular dead connection from the connection pool uh, of uh, your active connections right so in that case we are not using the test connection on reserve so what is happening is that it is automatically uh, updating the healthy connections in your connection pool with the help of your notification service and this adopt to change in topology such as adding or removing a node so for example if you are adding or uh, sc uh, scaling your database and then to, to me today you have a two instance of database tomorrow you will have a three or four so if you are scaling your database instances of rack instances in the back end then the newly added connection okay the newly added database instances will get automatically populated in your connection pool because when we configure the active grid link data source so for the database connection we do not specify the ip address of each and every uh, database node instead of that we define the scan ip scan address which is the feature of your oracle database from 12c onward okay so instead of of of, of multiple ips we specify only the scan dns name in our uh, data source configurations and that particular scan is automatically mapped to all of the running database instances in the backend right so every time you are adding any instances in your rack okay it will automatically get populated in your connection pool 
and it distribute runtime work request to all active oracle rack instances including those rejoining the cluster so whatever number of instances you have in your database rack node it will get automatically load balance the connection to each and every instance in your rack database right second is runtime connection load balancing okay this is one of the important feature of your active grid link data source and what is the feature is that suppose that you have a multiple instances of your database running in the back end and if your applications are accessing the database with the help of connection pools at the runtime right dynamically and at a certain moment if some of the instances are busy they are processing the request they are in the heavy under the heavy load then it will automatically populate that information to your connection pool okay this server is is, is uh, busy at, 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 at the moment so if you wanted to take a connection take it from the other instance which is having with a less load so that means it does the runtime connection load balancing according to the load of your backend rack clusters and third one is the grid link affinity so what it does so a grid link data source use a session affinity policy to ensure all database operations for a web session including transactions are directed to the same oracle rack instance of a rack cluster so this feature is similar to session uh, session uh, 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 session replications or you can say about the session options we have in your weblogic server or session affinity you have in your weblogic server which you can achieve with the help of load balancer where if you have connected to any of the backend managed server then every time that particular user initiating the request it will be connected to that particular backend application server okay so that increase the performance of your web applications or web stations specifically when you are doing a certain kind of a transaction for example in e-commerce website okay or in banking applications so if you are continuously accessing the website doing certain kind of a transactions on the website okay and if your station is getting connected to any one of the backend always so it increases a certain kind of a performance similarly the same concept you have in your database as well so if a connection is established to database okay from the web application okay then till that connection is active or doing something okay on the web session your connection will get connected to the single instances which was initially connected at the first request time okay so it will increase the performance of your application and this session affinity is by default enabled for weblogic server grid link data source that you can enable or or you can you can disable it as well if you want from the weblogic console so these are the three important features of your uh, weblogic active reading data source one is the fast connection failure second is the runtime connection load balancing and third is the grid link affinity right and now we will see a process how we can convert a generic data source to active data source as you can see on the screen i have a data source with the name of test ds which is a generic data source and if you want to convert this particular data source to active grid link data source for that you have a single script that you can use for conversion which is a wlst script okay and the parameters that you need to update in this script is only the name of your data source in my case the name of data source is test ds and then you have to connect a string where you can specify the name of your admin user of your weblogic server password and the url of your admin server along with the port and the parameter of your database the host name and the port of your database and the service name of your database and then as i said you have a notification service available in the database oracle rack database so for that you have to specify the uh, host name of your database and the ons port the so default ons port for your oracle is 6200 and if it is customized to a different then you can check with your dba on that what is the ons notification port after, after that you have a two text in the amber the first one is the uh, active grid link true that is you have to enable that you have to enable if you are using the weblogic server 1212 and 1213 okay so this you have to enable this particular line if you are using 1221 or later versions okay then you don't need to enable this line so once it is done we have modified the parameter then you can run the script with the help of uh, uh, weblogic wst uh, command uh, options okay so for that one first you can go to your domain bin with directory run the set domain env.sh file or dot bat in in case of windows and then run this particular file which we have stored all the content as i have mentioned in the previous slide along with the changes according to your requirement and once you will run that one it will take some time this is the output if you wanted to see what exactly is the output during the conversion okay and when it is finished you will see that your data source is converted to the grid link data so so thanks for watching this video and stay tuned for a few more interesting videos